Thank you all for coming to uh, the next installment of the OSHA Center for Integrative Medicine Grand Rounds. As you know, we alternate every month between a research presentation and a case presentation, and this month is uh, on research. Um, and thanks to those of you who are uh, participating virtually using our streaming option. I'm really excited that uh, we can expand this out to the uh, greater virtual community. Um, so today's seminar, which is led by Dr. Jiang Kong, um, addresses a, a topic that's near and dear to, to my research interests, which is the impact of mind-body practices on pain, um, not only in terms of uh, palliative care, but also of using this interesting paradigm of mind-body practices to understand how cognitive and more bottom-up processes interact to impact pain and well-being. And Dr. Kong is particularly well suited to, uh, to lead this uh, program of research. Um, Dr. Kong was trained in medical sciences in China, um, and he's currently the, uh, an associate professor in psychiatry here at the Harvard Medical School. He's also the director of the Neuroimaging Applications to Pain, Alternative Medicine, and Placebo programs, which is um, jointly based at the Harvard Medical School and MGH's uh, Martinos Center for Neuroimaging. Um, he's been involved in well over 10 NIH studies, many of which he's been uh, principal investigator for, um, and he's also um, um, highly published with over 145 uh, peer review articles. Uh, he's doing some really interesting work. Some of it is based here in, at Harvard. Some of it's with collaborators in uh, China, and I, I'm really excited to, to see these data. I've seen earlier versions of it a few months ago, and um, it's, it's really leading edge research. So without any delay, please uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Kong. Thank you for the nice introduction. Thank you, Peter. Um, <clears throat> so the topic I'm going to talk today is applying the power of the mind uh, to manage pain. <coughs> Let's see if I can make this work. Okay. Um, so medicine is about the healing, but we all know uh, healing is a very complicated process. Generally speaking, there may be uh, three components there. Uh, the first one um, is the self-healing property of the human body. After thousands of years of evolution, our human body do develop this ability to recover from disorders. Uh, for instance, if you get a cold, you're even not going to take any medication, you're still going to recover from this disorder through the immune system, uh, for instance. Uh, I call this a uh, uh, demonstration of the power of the human body. And another component, uh, which is after you know uh, sound of years medical practice and application of uh, technology of science, we have this specific effect of physical or pharmacological intervention. Uh, I call it the power of the medicine. Um, the third one uh, is between the first uh, and this, the, uh, the medicine uh, component is a non-specific effect of the treatment. Some people call it the placebo effect, uh, and I would like to call it uh, a demonstration of the power of the mind. Uh, the reason I use the power of the mind because there is uh, placebo, nocebo, just one example, and there's many other, other examples to demonstrate the power of mind. For instance, uh, the imagery, uh, the meditation, etc. So in today's talk, I'm going to focus on these components, which uh, are demonstration of the power of the mind. Um, believe it or not, actually, we have known the power of the mind for a long time. For instance, this is our sentence I found from the uh, Huang Dinajian, which is believed to be the Bible of alternative medicine, acupuncture, and said, if a patient does not consent to treat with positive engagement, the physician should not proceed, as the therapy will not succeed. And interesting, it's almost the same time in the other side of the world. Uh, Hippocrates, also uh, the father, which is a uh, father of the medicine, also uh, said the same thing. Um, he said, the patient, though conscious that his condition is perilous, may recover his health simply through his contentment with the goodness of the physician. And also the balance added that what matter, what was not only the medicine or the pills, but the way the doctor gave them to the patient, in fact, the whole atmosphere in which the drug was given. Mm -hmm. Data also demonstrated the power of 
mind. And here's a, um, a meta-analysis on 29 uh, randomized clinical trials for about 18 uh, chronic uh, pain patients. Uh, the conclusion is uh, acupuncture is effective for the treatment of the chronic pain and is therefore a reasonable uh, referral options. However, factors in addition to the specific fact of indoling are important contributors to the therapeutic ac acupuncture. And I want to emphasize this non-specific effect, powerful non-specific effect, is not only to uh, limit to the acupuncture, and here the book uh, from uh, Dr. Erwin Kirsch, who is a uh, researcher here at Harvard Med School, and uh, this, uh, in this uh, blurb of this book, um, it said, uh, Kirsch research, including a thorough analysis of decades of food and drug administration data, has demonstrated what everyone knew about antidepressants uh, was wrong. Instead of treating uh, depression with drugs, they had been treating it with suggestion. The drug themselves was just placebo, the psychiatric equivalent of sugar pill. And also, um, here's another one I found for the annual f internal medicine. It said antidepressants are only one of many classes of drugs with acid sensitivity problems. Uh, analgesics, uh, analytics, antihypertensives, hypnotics, and you can see, and many other effective agents are often indistinguishable uh, from placebo in well-designed and conducted trials. So I hope I've convinced you that the non-specific fact is very powerful. So then the next natural question is why this happened. Uh, so this is an early study we did, and the aim of the study is to investigate why this uh, placebo acupuncture can produce analgesic effect. So this is our conflict study. I try to keep it simple. Um, uh, generally, it's a three-session study. Uh, healthy subjects uh, uh, were involved, and we use uh, experiment heat pain. So we apply the heat pain on their forearm, and the temperature of heat pain was controlled by the computer. Uh, in session one, uh, it, which is a training session, uh, we gave them a different level of pain and find individualized temperature for each individual. And then in session two, we called expectancy manipulation uh, session. And the, the aim of this session is try to uh, make them believe acupuncture really work. So this is uh, um, how we did it. So basically, I don't see if you can see here. So basically, uh, let me explain. So basically, we, uh, in the beginning of session two, we make a story. We said, well, uh, based on the theory of acupuncture, and acupuncture can only produce analgesic effect around the meridians, so which is not true. So we told them we're going to do the acupuncture here, and, and then we uh, draw a line here. You can see here uh, on this side forearm. We told them if you respond to acupuncture, you you know you will feel the pain on relief on one side of forearm, but not on the other side. So in reality, what we did is we draw a line and gave them identical pain on both sides of forearm and do a placebo or shine acupuncture for five minutes. Then after that, without telling subject, we lower the temperature on the side where we told them acupuncture may relieve pain, but use them, uh, the same pain on the other side. So after this manipulation, everyone was very excited to feel the difference. So then, <coughs> In session three, then we say, that's great. Then um, uh, since you are responding to acupuncture, and then this time we're going to uh, scan your brain and say how are you going to respond, uh, your brain will respond to this treatment. So in reality, what we did is we, we gave them identical pain on both sides. We only lower one, uh, the temperature on one spot uh, on the side of where we told them meridian pass. So to record the thermal boost to make them believe acupuncture still work. But then for the last four spot, and we uh, two on each side, we use identical pain as before. So the pre-post pain rating on both sides uh, will be the uh, primary outcome for our study. And then, um, sorry, the first thing you can see here is uh, we found a significant pain rating difference uh, on the placebo side, where we make them believe acupuncture work, compared with the control side. Uh, where we make them, made them believe acupuncture uh, have no effect. Then in addition, we found actually two burn area. The top one will be the uh, anterior insular, and another one uh, is uh, we call uh, rotator ACC. We believe that these two areas actually play an important role uh, in the uh, placebo analgesic effect. 
So following that study, we did another study, and basically this uh, previous study, we demonstrate, uh, we invent the mechanism of placebo analgesia, but this time, uh, we invent the mechanism of nocebo effect. Uh, nocebo effect is someone called the negative placebo effect. So in clinical, just in case for those who are not familiar with uh, this effect, uh, you know, for instance, in a clinical randomized trials, you know, half subject receive real treatment, half were given the sugar pill. If at the very beginning you told them, you know, this drug is associated with side effects like uh, uh, fatigue, uh, you know, headache, and you find, you know, about 20% uh, or 30% sometimes, the patient will come back claiming uh, they have that side effect. And interestingly, you know, even people who receive sugar pill, which is placebo, uh, treatment also will come back and claim they have that side effect. That's what we call uh, nocebo effect. So in this study, we use a similar model uh, uh, than to invest this uh, nocebo effect. Uh, what we did, we told them is, uh, you know, it's also three session study. Session one is training. And then we told them that basically acupuncture can relieve pain, but in some special case, uh, it can make you uh, become pain sensitive. So then what we did is, uh, uh, Similar to Bereavis study, we gave them identical, we told them the story of Meridian, and we gave them identical pain on both sides, and we told them acupuncture can only produce effect on one side of their forearm, and then after treatment, uh, without telling the subject, uh, we actually increase the temperature on the side, we told them acupuncture may produce effect. So in that way, and everyone think, you know, actually acupuncture can enhance their pain experience. And then in session three, similar like pre previous study, we actually uh, investigate, uh, you know, uh, you know, we give them identical pain and say how this expectancy can modulate their uh, pain experience. And here is the result, and we have here we have two sides. We call it no simple, uh, no simple side where we they believe or condition that, that acupuncture can enhance their experience and also have a control side. You can say compare these two sides, actually, their pain rating is significantly different. And also we found actually some burn area, which is not uh, consistent with the area we found in placebo study. Uh, the burn area, like uh, those left, those uh, right dorsal uh, anterior cingulate, the uh, parietal procurin, and also hippocampus. Uh, play an uh, important role in this process. And particularly, we think the important region is hippocampus, because uh, studies suggest that this region is not only involved in memory, and also involved the pain and the anxiety of the pain. So this result actually consistent with some behavior study from uh, Dr. Gandhi, uh, which showed that the nocebo actually associates uh, with anxiety. <laughs> then having did that, I know we, uh, we said, wow, that's great. So it seems, you know, uh, this expectancy or belief is powerful. Then how it can interact with acupuncture treatment? To answer this question, we uh, uh, did another study. Again, it's a three-session study. And session one is a training session. And in session uh, two, subject was randomized to one of the four group. We use a two-by-two -two design, real and shy acupuncture by high and low expectancy. For high expectancy group, we just use this expectation modulation like we did before. For low expectancy, we just uh, did not apply this expectancy. We gave them identical pain before and after treatment on two sides. And then we use session three to uh, invite the treatment effect. And then you can see here, uh, the bar we, uh, is pain rate, indicated pain rating. Uh, this is pain rating to identical heat pain. And the bar, we use a uh, post minus pre. So that means if the bar uh, up indicate analgesia effect. We have four group here, placebo and real acupuncture by high and low expectancy. And also we have a within uh, subject control. That is uh, within each group, we have one side they believe acupuncture work, or one side they believe acupuncture will not work. You can see here, it doesn't matter to real or shine acupuncture. If they believe acupuncture work and relieve the pain, you can say uh, analgesia effect uh, as indicated by uh, pain uh, rating decrease. So then uh, what happened in the brain? Why this happened? Uh, this is a very complicated story. We still try to uh, know exactly what that means. But uh, basically here uh, is, we have a three color here. Uh, the red color indicate uh, 
uh, per area associated to, uh, to pain intensity. That is, if it gives you a different level of pain, this area tend to have different response. Uh, so we paint or call the pain encoding brain area. And the um, green color here indicate uh, the main effect of acupuncture. We use uh, real acupuncture minus placebo acupuncture. You can see here uh, this uh, green color area, which including the PAG, uh, um, medulla, thalamus, and insular are overlap with that red color uh, area. So that indicates that after acupuncture treatment, uh, you know, the incoming pain signal actually was somehow inhibited. And then that's the main effect of acupuncture. And then the blue color indicates the main effect of expectancy. We use uh, two expectancy, high expectancy groups minus low uh, high, uh, expectancy groups. You can see here, uh, again, we found the rostricity and KFC like we did before. And also we have another brain area for the amygdala. And we all know this brain area actually is social delay uh, emotion regulation. So our uh, interpretation for this result is the acupuncture is bottom up uh, modulation and the same can inhibit the pain, uh, you know, income, although uh, our pain rating uh, did not change. Uh, but uh, placebo expectancy is more likely to work from a top-down uh, uh, emotion modulation process. So that is a study we did in uh, healthy subjects. One question is, can we repeat the findings in uh, patient population? So we um, actually repeat the same study uh, in a patient with knee osteoarthritis patient. And then in this time, we only have two groups. Uh, the reason we only include two groups is because we always have a within subject control. And then <coughs> here the result, and we actually uh, found at least behaviorally we can repeat previous study. So that is uh, after this expectancy manipulation, uh, we see strong expectancy uh, effect, um, but there's no uh, difference between the real and the shine acupuncture. And also in this study, we, uh, we start collecting the resting state functional connectivity data, and we, uh, we want to know if we can use this uh, resting state connectivity, which we uh, collected data collected in the baseline uh, at the beginning of this uh, session three, which is MRI session, and can use this data to predict our uh, placebo or treatment response. So this time we use uh, uh, something we call a graph theory. And so the basically we divide our brain region into about more than uh, 100 uh, brain area based on some atlas. And then we compute the connectivity between all these regions. And then uh, we calculate the, some parameters of uh, this graph theory and to say we can, these pr pr parameters can predict our treatment response. We actually found uh, two parameters. One is called clustering coefficient, another one called the low coefficient, and found that these two parameters actually can predict uh, placebo response. And in, then in addition, we also invite, you know, what happened when we gave them uh, experiment hit pain, like what we did before. And this time, uh, which uh, is a little bit surprised to me, we actually found that that is brain network associated with expectancy uh, when it's combined with real acupuncture is different from when it's combined with placebo acupuncture. And you can see here there's uh, some overlap, also some uh, uh, you know difference there. So then why that happened? So we, we in this study, we actually used, uh, for the acupuncture, we used electroacupuncture. Then we invited, you know, what happened during this continuous 20 minutes electroacupuncture stimulation. We actually found actually during this uh, continuous acupuncture stimulation, uh, the regional coherence of lots of brain regions, which is believed to be associated with uh, pain, actually the, is decreased compared with shine. So this area, uh, including the dorsal ACC and uh, uh, insular portulan and ACE2. So, in the, uh, so one thing I want to emphasize here, although this study we, uh, you know, focused on the, uh, you know, placebo expectancy or whatever you call the psychiatric uh, psychological effect of acupuncture, but we also repeatedly found it is 
you know, strong, robust modulation effect of real acupuncture. And here is just one, one example to demonstrate you know, that the continuous uh, electroacupuncture stimulation actually can uh, modulate the brain activity of this pain-related brain area. <coughs> and also, I want to emphasize this uh, powerful modulation effect of expectancy is not something uh, unique to acupuncture. This is a study from um, uh, uh, Bingos and Ivan Tracy group, and what they did is investigate the, um, how the expectancy can modulate the analgesic effect of opiate ram ram fentanyl. And in this study, they use a similar, um, but not the same model, and they also use a permanent heat pain. So you can see here, the, um, they have a baseline, uh, no expectancy, positive expectancy, negative expectancy. So what they did is actually they gave the um, a V line, and then <coughs> uh, the baseline indicates they didn't start administration of ramifentanyl. So uh, also just uh, want to, uh, uh, so basically and also want to say is the pain is the same. It's identical heat pain, and the bar here indicated their pain rating. And the baseline indicating no administration of ramifentanyl, and no expectancy uh, indicated when they start administration of ramifentanyl, but they did not tell the patient. That is their pain rating at that stage. And the positive expectancy indicates the pain rating while they told the subject that the administration of ramifentanyl. And then the negative expectancy is they still give the administration of ramifentanyl, but they told they have stopped administration. So you can see here the pain rating of the next expectancy is almost the same as the baseline. So that indicated, uh, you know, this expectancy is basically canceled out uh, the energy state of ramfentanyl. So which is uh, similar uh, to our previous findings. And also, um, they also measure the both pain rating and the unpleasant uh, rating, and you can see uh, the trend is very similar there. So then after doing that, um, in addition to compare the difference between the, uh, the real and the sham acupuncture, we also want to invite the association between the, uh, between the real acupuncture and the placebo acupuncture. So uh, the question we want to really ask is, if an individual responds to a real acupuncture, will he or she also tend to respond to uh, placebo acupuncture? And in addition, we want to know is, uh, if an individual responds to placebo acupuncture, will he and she will also respond to placebo pills? And if you, you can say to answer this question, the traditional randomized can, uh, trials cannot answer this question because you know uh, one individual have to receive all these different treatment. So in this study, we used our crossover design, and the, the very beginning is the session one is a. Uh, uh, you know, training session, then they will uh, randomize receive real acupuncture, uh, placebo pills, we told them it's a ramifentanyl, and uh, also shine acupuncture and the uh, uh, waiting list. Uh, basically, they're doing nothing, take a break uh, in that session. Each session uh, was separate by at least one week. And before and after each session, we measure their pain threshold and to say how this treatment can uh, modulate their pain uh, sensitivity. And after that, uh, you know, after the whole study, we also uh, bring them to fMRI scan, and in this time, we actually uh, use a, a placebo-like conditioning model to investigate the Q effect uh, of these individuals. And so, um, in summary, we found that there is a significant association uh, between the genuine acupuncture and the shen acupuncture, uh, which is consistent with our hi previous hypothesis, that is, uh, non-specific effects seem to play an important role in acupuncture treatment. Uh, in addition, we found there's no significant association between the placebo pills, shine acupuncture, and the kill conditions, indicating that the individual may respond to unique healing rituals in different ways. <laughs> so then um, after that, because it's a powerful placebo, nocebo uh, model, and then oh, we also did you know, uh, about six studies to invest this. Uh, conditioning effect with uh, different uh, tools, and we uh, actually found that first placebo and nocebo like conditioning effect can be obtained from either personal experience or observing others' experience. 
And we also found this visual cue after both direct and indirect conditioning can influence our pain reading consciously and unconsciously. And also, we found a conflict free network are involved in uh, this process. So then the next question uh, will be, you know, why it matters, right? So, uh, so the aim of research actually is to enhance the treatment effects. So then how can we uh, translate the findings uh, or brief findings to medical practice to enhance the acupuncture? Uh, that is something uh, I'm in very interested in, and this is a pilot study uh, we did. So theoretically, if we want to uh, enhance acupuncture treatment, then uh, either way it's just to enhance their uh, expectancy using this expectancy manipulation model um, I mentioned before. But what we cannot do is, uh, is for the chronic pain patient, like low back pain, knee OA, there is no such a thing, or we cannot easily modulate the expectancy. So then we think maybe we can still use this uh, expectancy manipulation model using experiment pain, and we, our hope is after we enhance their expectancy to acupuncture treatment to experiment pain, maybe their brain can automatically transfer this expectancy to the acupuncture treatment of chronic pain. That is our hypothesis. And so in, to test this hypothesis, we recruited a, a patient with a knee OA, and then we uh, randomized them to one of the four, uh, three treatment group. One we called, uh, the first one we called a boosted acupuncture group, and the, um, another one is a standard acupuncture group, and the last one is uh, no treatment or, or euro treatment group. And so in, in the uh, boosted acupuncture treatment group, we just use this expectancy manipulation model to make them believe, uh, use this experiment pain to make them believe acupuncture actually really work uh, for them, and you can see the figure there. And uh, basically, uh, we this time we applied the uh, experiment heat pain on their knee, and we told them, you know, we're going to give you the treatment. But in session one, we also give you, uh, uh, we're going to treat your knee pain. But in session one, also test, you know, how acupuncture treat your heat pain. We we'll give you identical pain on your uh, heat uh, on your knee, and then to say if you respond to. Uh, heat pain. Uh, if you respond to heat pain, you will highly likely acupuncture will also relieve your uh, knee pain. That is uh, what we told them. And so um, the design is this is a, a three arm study. And in session one, we uh, use this expectancy manipulation model believe, makes them believe acupuncture work. And then they all receive one month of acupuncture treatment for their knee pain. Then after one month, we actually debrief them. We told them uh, we in this boost acupuncture group, we actually lower the temperature. But we also told them that if acupuncture really works to relieve your knee pain, that really uh, that effect should continue. Then we gave another additional one month of treatment to test after debrief, will that effect remain? So in the uh, standard acupuncture uh, treatment groups, the, all the treatment is the same. We even gave them identical pain at, as a boost acupuncture group. But we informed them after in session one, after treatment, uh, we, we lower the temperature. We say that have no relation with acupuncture. We just want to invest how your brain responds to different levels of pain. And here is a, a clinical outcome, which is a course uh, pain sub score and the bar up indicate improvement. You can see after four week treatment, we can see significant difference uh, between the uh, standard acupuncture and the boost acupuncture group. And then after debriefing, uh, you know, after eight months, we, we, uh, sorry, eight weeks, we still can see the difference. Just keep in mind, the, you know, the the acupuncture is identical. The only difference is we make them believe acupuncture really not just boosted their expectancy at the beginning of this treatment. So then, um, why has happened? So what happened in the brain? So the basically, uh, in recent years, there are many theories on placebo expectancy. Uh, one thing I think is very interesting is uh, people believe that expectancy of pain relief is a reward. And also, re accumulating evidence suggests both descending pain modulation system and reward motivations, uh, motivation to 
play an important role in this uh, pain modulation process. So in this study, we investigate uh, the resting state, uh, resting state functional connectivity of a key region of reward network, that is nucleic accumbens, as shown in these figures. And we actually found that compared with standard acupuncture treatment, the, the boost acupuncture can produce significantly more functional connectivity between these uh, nucleic accumbens and the ROS2-ACSA. And also this connectivity change is also associated with their uh, cold pain rating increase. <coughs> so indicating, you know, this both, uh, this, uh, you know, reward motivation process or connection because we, uh, you know, we all know that it's RACC and MPFC actually play an important role in descending pain modulation system. So uh, this study indicates that, our, our results indicate that the connectivity between this reward network and descending uh, pain modulation networks was uh, significantly enhanced. So um, here's the summary of this part of the work. So basically we uh, try to say that is, uh, you know, um, the treatment effect depends not only on the treatment itself, but also on the expectancy of belief. The positive expectancy can enhance the treatment. Negative expectancy will uh, inhibit the treatment. Uh, there's a very complicated player brain network involved in this process. So the second part of the talk, I'm going to focus on another uh, uh, example demonstration of the power mind, or that is uh, uh, imagery. So in this study, we invested the NOGC effect uh, produced by real and imaged acupuncture. Uh, why are we doing this? Because we, we all know that acupuncture uh, is great, but uh, acupuncture, like other treatment, uh, there are some potential uh, limitations. For instance, you have to go to the clinic using acupuncture. Uh, you know, it's very hard to get appointment for a well-known and famous acupuncturist. And also, uh, uh, you know, when you need the acupuncturist, but maybe they are not available, and some people are also afraid of needles. So the aim of this study is to say if we can develop some supplementary uh, treatment of the acupuncture. So the rationale we did this is uh, because we do uh, pain research, we uh, previous study indicate if you uh, experience pain and you will have a whole brain network evolved in your brain area. But if you see other people experience pain, your, your brain also responds and there is overlap between these two networks. So we also know that previous studies showed uh, from both our group and other group that acupuncture stimulation uh, provokes a widespread brain activation and deactivation. So the question is, if we ask you to say the needle stimulation on your own body and ask you imagine we are stimulating your own body, will that produce some brain activity which is overlap with the real acupuncture treatment and will that produce some analgesic effect. That is the hypothesis we want to test. So this study is again performed on healthy uh, subject. And so this is our um, five session study. We use session one to train the subject, uh, get familiar with the environment, understanding the procedure. And then the patient re randomly received uh, real acupuncture, shan acupuncture, uh, imagined acupuncture, and imagined acupuncture control. For the imagined acupuncture, which we call the uh, Wigit, uh, we believe it's a video guided uh, imagery acupuncture treatment. Uh, we, in session one, we gave them a, 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 gave them a quick uh, acupuncture exposure. Then we use iPhone to tape these treatment procedures. And then in the uh, imagined acupuncture treatment, we show them the video of 20 minutes acupuncture stimulation from time to time. Uh, on their own body, and then ask them to imagine that we were stimulating uh, this area during this uh, needle. Uh, so then uh, in the control condition, we just use a swap to do the same procedure uh, as uh, imagine acupuncture, we just use a swap, gently touch their skin to ask them to imagine we're touching them. And then <clears throat> before and after we actually marry their pain uh, threshold and say, well, the different treatment can <clears throat> produce different effects. So um, the first thing we say, will that 
imagine acupuncture produce some sensations because uh, your acupuncture research will always always say uh, this uh, dirty sensation uh, is important to acupuncture treatment. And then we actually compare the, uh, the dirty sensation. We use, this time we use uh, uh, the scale we developed. We called um, Massachusetts General Hospital acupuncture sensation scales. And uh, um, we actually found that uh, you know, for the average sensation, uh, of course, real acupuncture produces bridge sensation, followed by the shy acupuncture, and followed by the Wigate, and then followed by the Wigate control. There is a significant difference between the uh, Wigate or imagined acupuncture and imagined uh, acupuncture control. Uh, it's, it's a tiny or mild sensation, but it's there. And uh, almost most of the people actually report some sensation, even when they are watching with uh, video and the imagine, you know, we are doing that. So the next question is, will that uh, change our pain experience? Uh, in this time, we actually use uh, both heat pain, uh, maritime pain, both heat pain threshold and also uh, the mechanical pain threshold. And we also uh, measure this pr uh, pain threshold in both local where we apply the acupuncture, which uh, on their leg, and also distant area uh, on their, the contralateral side of their forearm or nail. And we actually found that uh, for the mechanical pain threshold, both distant and local, and we found um, basically the imagined acupuncture and real acupuncture uh, analgesia is almost the same. There are no different. Both is better than uh, control conditions. Uh, for the heat pain threshold, I know we, we found significant difference between real and shared acupuncture, but we only found that trend uh, for the imagined acupuncture compared with uh, imagine acupuncture control. So then what happened in, brain, uh, in the brain? So in all these four treatments, we actually, uh, the whole 20 minutes uh, treatment, we actually use the MRI to scan their brain and see their brain response. And this is their brain response to different treatments. Uh, the red color indicates fMRI signal increase or activation. The uh, blue color indicates fMRI signal decrease or deactivation. And you can see there's some overlap for deactivation here, like uh, um, anterior insular. And also, uh, we did find some common area for fMRI signal uh, increase, activation, which is uh, insular. And also, we use this uh, multi- uh, various pipe analysis to uh, explore the brain activity change and the analgesic effect uh, we detected. We found actually both the response in insular were related to the mechanical pain threshold change um, measured in the leg and the thumb for real acupuncture and both response in the RACC, the same region we found in our first uh, placebo acupuncture uh, study is actually associated with uh, um, you know, pain threshold uh, change we observe in imagined acupuncture treatment. And then we think it's very interesting because this modulation effect of the RACC uh, and PSC may indicate a lot of potential uh, because this area is not only our uh, key region for deformal network, descending pain modulation system, and also uh, recent study have shown this area actually are involved in the neuropathology of the chronic pain. Um, there are many studies um, on this topic. This is just one example. Uh, it's uh, uh, one study from our lab. And we actually found the connectivity of this area with other different network was altered uh, in patient with chronic low back pain patient. Um, and also here's another study. We use a different method. We, again, we found that the both uh, acti brain uh, activity and the structure of this RACC and MPC uh, were changed uh, compared with a uh, healthy subject, which indicates there may be a lot of control uh, potentials uh, for this uh, wicket for the treatment of chronic pain. And also we have this byproduct of, uh, uh, of treatment. Okay, so then um, this study, uh, so uh, we, because we use, of course, over design, and then uh, because uh, then we, we can know, you know, compare real and shy acupuncture, we know the real acupuncture treatment effect. And then we, we want to take one to D2 to investigate uh, if the caffeine can modulate uh, the acupuncture treatment. Uh, just in case you're not familiar with uh, this uh, story, is uh, uh, in 2010, there's a, a 
nature neuroscience paper indicating that uh, uh, adenosine mediate effect of acupuncture. And then after that, um, uh, there's a news in nature, say, uh, someone said, if caffeine, uh, caffeine block adenosine receptor, then it should be able to block acupuncture analgesic effect. Then there are two animal studies and show that uh, actually caffeine intake can modulate the acupuncture analgesic effect. And then um, in this study, we also measured the caffeine intake and duration uh, using a questionnaire, and then we uh, use this mid model regression to investigate, you know, will caffeine intake can influence NLGC effect? Because we think it's important. Uh, some acupuncturists start telling the subject, or oh, patient, do not drink coffee before uh, they come to clinics. And so we actually found the dur duration of a caffeine consumption, daily consumption uh, amount, and daily amount of duration all not associated with the caffeine, daily caffeine intake, indicate that at least maybe the daily uh, intake caffeine, caffeine will not influence the acupuncture uh, analgesia in healthy subject. <coughs> so then uh, we also, um, you know, compare the, you know, high dose and low dose of caffeine intake and also found no significant difference. And then uh, why that's the case, so our interpretation is, you know, uh, adenosine may be just one of the many uh, mechanisms for acupuncture. And also because all these animal studies actually use the acupuncture needle for human beings. I th we think if you compare the body surface of um, <coughs> the rat and the human being, you will see big difference. So I think that invasiveness is important uh, for the uh, caffeine uh, inhibition effect of detecting in the rat. <coughs> And finally, I just take three minutes to quickly go through some pilot study we did on mind-body uh, intervention, which is Tai Chi. And this time, we, we, we were focused on fibromyalgia. And the Tai Chi is because, you know, there are two uh, studies from Dr. Wang Chen Chen here in the audience. From Tufts, they uh, demonstrated the, that, you know, uh, Tai Chi actually can relieve the symptoms uh, of um, patient with femoral algae. So the question will be why, why? And then this is a very pilot study. Um, uh, we actually recruit 24 patients and 24 uh, healthy controls. And then uh, this is a single uh, arm study. We only um, scan the fMRI signal change uh, before and after Tai Chi uh, treatment. There's no control group. And then uh, we found that after uh, three months of Tai Chi practice, we say significant uh, uh, clinical pain symptom relief uh, in this patient. And then <clears throat> we want to know uh, which is repeat of um, her previous study. So the question is why this ha happened. So then currently there are different theory about the mind body. The one I like the most is this from the, the Tang Yuan and, and colleagues. They basically say there are three mechanisms for this mind body. One is attention control, one is emotion regulation, and one is self uh, awareness. And here's another study from Cassie Bushino. They also uh, emphasize two, uh, this is for mind body for chronic pain. Uh, she actually uh, emphasized two uh, mechanisms one is attention modulation, one is emotion modulation, which is two of them to modulate uh, with theory of uh, press. Uh, Professor Tang, as I just mentioned. So then um, uh, in this study, we actually uh, choose one region of interest that's a dorsal uh, uh, lateral prefrontal area because this area is not only involved in the attention control, but also involved in the emotion regulation. And then we say, you know, what happened compared to this uh, difference before and after Tai Chi and as well as how it's different from the healthy control. So the, the result is interesting, but it's quite a surprise. Um, the reason I say it's surprising is because we first compare their uh, connectivity change between the fibromyalgia patient and the control. We actually found that the connectivity in the patient between the DLPFC and this RAC, CMPFC increased. So then after Teddy practice, we, we were expecting that connectivity you know, decreased or normalized, and actually we found it's a further increase, which is a big surprise to me. And then <clears throat> we're still trying to say what does that mean, but here is our uh, hypothesis. Uh, we, we, we believe this uh, may indicate a phenomenon of this uh, allostasis. So, um, so the basically, as I mentioned in the beginning, our human body do have this ability of self-modulation. And then when we have the fibromyalgia, uh, without any treatment, our brain start this 
self-regulation process already, as indicated in enhancement between this DOPC and the Gossel CC. And then after this tidy, or tidy or maybe other treatment, just a way to further enhance this self-regulation process. So that's why after tidy, uh, you know, we're not detecting any signal in connectivity decrease, rather it's uh, increase. And also this uh, is consistent with previous studies indicating the important role of DLPFC um, in pain modulation process, and also consistent with our previous study, uh, which showed that first, uh, you know, there's connectivity between the RSCC and the PAG, a key region in um, descending pain modulation system, and also fibromyalgia patient, and was associated with brain function and structure uh, change in this area. And then one thing is, you know, uh, we do the brain imaging study, we know uh, uh, when the design become complicated or when the treatment involved, it's very hard to uh, rapidly find this. And uh, but fortunately, in another cohort study, this is a study we collaborated with uh, Fujian University uh, in China, and then we actually found that uh, after three months of tidy and bad in treatment of knee OA with different population, and we also found that the resting state connectivity between the DLPFC and this. Uh, RACC will increase, uh, which is consistent with uh, what we found in this uh, tidy treatment of fibromyalgia patient. And finally, I just you know, briefly mention, I know I don't have that time, is uh, one, uh, one thing very interesting recently is uh, well different mind-body intervention uh, work through the same mechanism. This is a, a recent study we published. Basically, we compare uh, the you know modulation effect of a deformed mode network uh, by uh, both Tai Chi and Ba Duan Jin, two um, popular mind-body exercise. We actually found different mechanisms are involved in this process, indicating, I think it's uh, opened a lot of potentials, indicating we may, uh, you know, individualize or modify different uh, mind-body treatment for different individuals. So this is a summary of my talk. Basically, we have mind, we have body, as like yin and yang, and also, um, so we can use this bottom, uh, bottom up modulation, like acupuncture kinds of physical exercise to enhance our uh, mind, uh, modulate our mind, and also we can use this uh, top-down modulation, expectancy, uh, belief, imagery to uh, modulate our body. And then we have also have some, this direct interaction between the mind and the mobile body and uh, sorry, and the brain play an important role in this uh, process, linking this uh, two important part. And uh, like to take the chance to thank all of my collaborators, postdoc research assistants and students, and also general support from NIH. And thank you for your attention. So that was a fabulous talk. Thank you, thank you Dr. Kong. Um, and you can tell he's been very busy. Um, these are really elegant studies done rigorously with large teams of people. And I don't know if you noticed, many of them were published in the last year or two. So you've been a very busy person. So I'm wondering, um, are you willing to answer no, some no, questions? No. Um, some questions from the audience? We have a microphone here. Hi, good morning. Thank yeah. you for a wonderful talk. I am just kind of curious what you think the clinical implications are uh, in terms of, so I'm an acupuncturist mm -hmm. at Boston Medical Center, um, and we work with chronic pain groups. Mm -hmm. So how can we um, condition our patients to expect a better outcome? Thank you. This is a great question. That's actually, uh, we're thinking, you know, how to, uh, what we should do uh, to enhance treatment effect. Um, um, something I did not mention, we also tried this uh, enhances doctor-patient relationship by this contact modulation. And uh, for instance, feel the pulse and uh, show empathy and to enhance the, uh, you know, the doctor-patient relationship on, uh, on chronic uh, low back pain patient. Unfortunately, uh, we failed. We found this, this contact m manipulation uh, does not enhance the treatment effect. Um, the, the question is, uh, you can still try, 
but you know, just think of any way you can enhance expectancy. That's the only thing I can tell. Sorry, I cannot, don't have other information. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, can I follow up on that? Yeah. And um, as you know, in, in, in these mind-body practices, mm -hmm. one of the roles of the teacher is to enhance expectancy. And even the Tai Chi classics say, your mind or your yi moves your chi and your chi moves your body. So you tell people to look for feelings. Yeah. And I'm wondering, in your research, um, your, your, one of your main points is that some of what's happening is expectancy and top down, but some of it is actually moving the body or m physical manipulation with needles. Have you start to think about how you might explore the role of intention versus just physical exercise um, in understanding the sort of neural basis of things like Tai Chi and um, Badua Jin as compared to, for example, you have the cycling example there. Yeah, so the, um, actually we found, actually, thank you for the question. The first thing is um, uh, expectancy is important, but I think mind-body intervention like Tai Chi or mindfulness, I think it's attention control and uh, emotion regulation is more important, in my opinion. And particularly when you have the chronic pain, you just keep thinking, you know, this pain condition add anxious anxiety. Actually, it's a distraction uh, of focus to from this pain, the suffering, to some other part, like you just mentioned, the flow of the chi and uh, your body postures. That's really important. This attention actually, uh, this shift changes the whole. Uh, network, the, the, the coherence of the body, and also that actually can modulate uh, the emotion process. I just mentioned this DLPFC actually can, it's key region for both discerning pain modulation, attention control, and emotion modulation. So that, I, I do think that attention uh, control will play an important role. But I would imagine that there's some kind of synergy um, between just doing a psychotherapeutic um, mindfulness and doing that with the movement. Yes, exactly. And so you can see here. That would be interesting. Yeah, uh, there's uh, some common network. But we also found actually uh, we also have some inflammation marker. I just showed that actually the exercise have can produce the greatest uh, change in inflammation markers compared with mind body, which I think is less intensive. Uh, I think there's a pros cons for each. Uh, of this uh, yeah. you know, mind-body intervention, and including the exercise. Yeah, thank you. Hi, great talk. I'm interested in chronic pain because I'm a clinician, and it seems like we're in an epidemic of non-communicable chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. And probably everybody over 40, you could say has either some kind of joint pain, some kind of back pain, or some kind of head pain, head and neck. Um, half the population probably fits that. And they have pain for years, and it's often episodic. And I wonder if any of the studies point to long-term pain. It would be wonderful to know, to be able to say to someone, you're going to need acupuncture once a month for the next 20 years, but it'll work. Or we don't have any information like that. So is there, any, is there anybody looking at episodic chronic pain and following people for, say, more than a year? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we didn't do that. Sorry. And so then the, sorry. The, we only um, did for two months. And then for this uh, uh, mind-body intervention study, we're collaborating with Indian University. And uh, uh, it's, I think it's a three months. So uh, maybe Dr. Wanderton, this study is a three, a three months or follow-up for another three months, half a year, right? So, yeah, yeah, six months total. So that's maybe six months. I don't know any studies longer than six months. Maybe it's something there. I just don't know. Yeah. Again, six month study, um, they found that physical exercise was equivalent to Tai Chi or Neo A, but only in the Tai Chi group did you also see Sorry, I didn't realize I, I have to say something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the study we mentioned about, Dr. mentioned about fibromyalgia is not a new way. Fibromyalgia study will compare five different dosage. And uh, uh, Tai Chi for 12 weeks, 24 weeks, once a week, twice a week, compare the standard aerobic exercise. Actually, we do find a longer study 
and patient practice more 24 weeks get much better and uh, uh, results reduce pain anxiety depression quality life seems everything so currently there's not enough not insufficient evidence for long-term and uh, my body study support uh, only short term short term and uh, study can support can reduce pain and improve quality life but uh, for our study uh, we do find the six months and it seems uh, much better but as uh, a longer practice we follow up one year the longer practice seems uh, much better get, get much better results yeah great talk thank you I, I know in the acupuncture literature, a variety of different types of sham acupuncture have been mm -hmm. used, some of which are thought to perhaps be a little bit more active mm -hmm. than others. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you notice differences in brain activation depending on the type of sham that's used, if you've looked at that at all. So we, we always use a striper needle at sham point. So that is pretty much our standard sham procedure. So we. Uh, Sorry, we shut down the reading now. Compare, yeah, yeah, yeah. We believe that's a better shame. Uh, I'm curious if you, um, you mentioned, in, I think, in your last slide, you put in tens as a, as a, another one from bottom um, bottom up. Uh, oh, you, okay, this one. I'm st right ten. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, so I'm curious, it actually made me think about, you know, have you studied electroacupuncture mm -hmm. versus sort of standard manual, acupuncture, yeah, manual acupuncture yeah. as well as uh, just thinking about like MOXA and how it's used and that creates mm -hmm. this, that is MOXA's effect on expectation uh, versus, or is there something additional that you've noticed if, if that's been studied as well? Yeah, thank you. So we, we did some study to compare electroacupuncture and the manual acupuncture. We did find their burn response is different and also uh, the crossover design indicates some mind we, uh, tend to respond to manual and some mind tend to respond to electro. So the mechanism is different. We, we, we did not have compared the, the MOXA. It's, uh, we never, we did not have a chance to do any more Sebastian study. Hi, I'm the Reiki coordinator here at Brigham and Women's, and I'm curious if you've had any attention at all from early education folks, um, and if mindfulness meditation, Tai Chi, and other types of all kinds of things like that um, are started at an early age. You know, ha have people come forward and said, "Tell me more," because I'm in early education and I would like to start this at an earlier age. Yes, I, I, I know some studies are planning to do some on the less mind body in patients with autism. And also I know some group in China is doing some uh, study in, you know, teenagers to, uh, you know, uh, do something. Uh, and also, yeah, there's some study on in college student, teenagers, and maybe child are going in there. I think they have a different uh, aim and enhance the cognition you know, uh, that kind of stuff. Yes, there's something going on there, but uh, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, I don't have any close connection with them, yeah. Well, thank you again for such a fabulous and provocative presentation. Um, please join me in thanking Dr. Kong.